Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I'm back again looking at corners. I uh, thought I'd, I'd finished with this, but I haven't. One thing I do when I'm looking at products, whether they're small or larger like chairs, I find myself subconsciously like running your finger around corners and uh, across transitions and stuff like that. And you actually can pick up quite a lot of the detail of uh, and the form through your fingers without looking. So I thought the, the last three videos uh with corners that's pretty much all visual like aesthetics like how highlights play off things but there's actually quite a big component of design which is the tactility and and how you interact physically with an object and what it feels like so you're looking at curvature graphs like here this is the first one uh tells you a certain amount of information and i've always thought oh is there a way to actually maybe we can make something like a curvature graph except uh you know like simulating your finger with the pressure in the nerves the mechano receptors in your fingers to see what it might what might be better and what you know what's ideal so i've taken uh these the construction sketches that were used in uh, my second corner video and i've put them into rhino and i've i've spent a bit of time uh, following a few ideas I've had for a while, looking at using Grasshopper to approximate like a, a dummy finger running around a corner and then extracting some information to see what that might uh, give us. So I don't know if this is conclusive in any way, but it's just a start. It's something to think about. It's an exercise to uh, see if there's any value in doing this kind of thing. So I've, I've spent a bit of a day here mucking around with Grasshopper. And I've got a whole lot of curves here, as you can see. I've got all those ones I mentioned, uh, and a couple of other ones. And and then I thought, you know, how am I going to make a like make a finger run around a corner? So this is this is the first version, which is the truck and trailer. So as you can see, that's like a I've got a a distance between some receptors, and then it follows a point round. And if I toggle on here, I I, I figured I'd have to sample this truck and trailer thing in lots of places and I'm going to sample the angle uh, between the two lines so you can see there I've repeated that a number of times I've got a step count there's, so there's 300 repeats of that and then that information is fed um, over here where I've built a curve and there's the curvature graph on there so this is you know, I'm not, I'm not too sure what I'm actually coming up with on this, uh, what, it, what, what it's saying. I mean, I know what it's saying here, like, uh, or here because we're, this first curve I'm looking at is, uh, one piece, uh, G3. So if you look over here, you can see, ah, uh, G3, what I'm talking about, G1. So you can see here, that's an arc running around there. I'll just hide all this stuff. Okay, so that's an arc so that's why you get sudden transition from from a linear to a sudden acceleration like on a point and but then this inflection i'm not quite sure what i'm what i'm calculating there so and you can change the like the distance between the the samples or the receptors as i've called it but there's only three and they're running that's why I've had to run all these samples all over the, you know, all over the curve. So if we change this to something like uh, the G2 three-piece that's approximating that clothoidal uh, curve, you can see there, that's a bit, you get rid of those sharp transitions. But we do, you've got to ignore some of this because this is an interpolated spline. So it's not, you know, it's got hundreds of points in there. So it's not necessarily, it might be a sharp transition from the horizontal there or uh, let's have a look at a g3 one piece where is it one piece with relief so this is the smoothest version i came up with in that exploration uh you know looking at corners with this approximated clothoidal transition so anyway i thought okay that shows you some stuff i don't actually know how useful it is like if you've got a small finger uh you're, you're detecting in more localized spots um but I was kind of struggling to understand what I was looking at. So instead of the truck and trailer with um, pre-sampling all this stuff, I thought why don't I uh, make something more interactive where we can see sort of localized curvature, like what's what's happening just under this, just under the truck and trailer, but 
Okay, so that brings me down here to the sample construction equal division. I'm not going to cover this other one up here, that was an experiment. So this time around, I've actually, after studying my finger and how it goes around the corner of my iPhone, decided to look at pressure because there's what's known as Merkel discs in your finger. And I think as far as I can tell they're what uh, have to do with slow um, slow acting pressure changes. So if I kind of keep a constant pressure of my finger going around the corner. So this this theory here, if I just change my count down a bit here, so reduce our samples. So I've got a couple of points that are, where I've got a point in the middle. So you can see these green points here. So I've got a point in the middle, and that's the one that I'm driving with this um, location. So the parameter along this whole joint curve. Uh, and then I've got a, a touch length, which is from this point to this point here. So I can change that. So that's the approximate sampling length. And then I'm basically equal amount of points dividing that line there. And then I've also shattered the the main input geometry and we've got a, a section of that which you can see there, the green and then again that's being uh, divided equally same amount of points as the straight line and then I'm measuring the distance between those and I'm turning that into a graph into my own curve down here as you can see so I'll just crank that up again okay so what you can see there this piece of the graph that's that linear section that represents this area here and what that's saying is these distances there's a, a linear increase in the in the distances until it hits the arc there where you get this jump so that all makes sense to me you can see that running around i haven't quite digested why that sort of gets more parabolic in the middle or bigger or grows in height um I guess it's because this line is deviating more away from the arc as it goes around. So I've probably got a bit more work to do on figuring out if there is a useful solution here. But um, what you can see there is your finger as it tracks around an arc and you move there, there's no change in curvature. So that's why my finger uh, is not detecting anything there. So let's change, change this key here to... Uh, two-piece tangent arc which is kind of my uh, old ways to do uh, these corners which was like having an arc that I assumed this piece of arc actually touched or tang was tangent to the sides and then I put in between these these blue dots I put in a little um, spline blend but uh, after that clothoidal work I've decided or discovered that's not the best way to do it so what you can see here is you can see there is quite a pronounced curvature jump anyway i can probably smooth that out a bit more but that curvature jump there that's presented quite clearly there as your finger runs across it and again this has got a big arc section in the middle so there's not much change there and then lots of change at the end and have a look at it so this g3 three piece with no relief that was uh one of these variations so that one there uh and that's where i had kind of a compressed curvature as you can see there's a wobble uh in the transition and that kind of stands out when you run the artificial finger over it so you can sort of see there's this sort of lumpiness that rolls across there Okay, so that one's got lumpiness there. So we couldn't I couldn't really detect lumpiness in the in the zebra stripes or anything when I was comparing these the other day. So let's have a look at three piece relief. So this is the same thing except I've allowed a bit of bit more relief on each end of the spline there. So you can see there that's much better sort of um, much more even curvature change and then into the into the arc. And that's quite smooth there. But I think I think what I'm sort of erring towards now is like, you know, if we took this through into a 
into a single piece. I wasn't really sold the other day when I was looking at this. I was like, oh yeah, the construction is probably easier to build a repeatable construction if you have some ratios doing this three piece kind of approach. But after looking at the one piece G3 with relief, that one there, that is that gives us by far the smoothest um, result with the with the finger moving across. And I don't know if your finger when it's when it's when you're transitioning across curves like this, if it really matters if it's like you know like a true arc section through the middle here. Like that's not staying still. That's constantly changing. Even though I have tried to approximate an arc section through the middle there. So who knows if this is, you know, of any use. I'm going to spend some more time on it when I've when I've got time between projects just to see where if anything useful drops out. What else have we got? Oh yeah, Apple Watch cross section. So I'm going to have to turn down the touch length on this because because otherwise it runs off the ends. Uh, so let's say using a smaller finger. Okay. Uh, so you can see what's going on here, that's the screen, and then that's the screen transitioning around to the split with the case, and that's the case through there. And there's some quite pronounced sort of, you know, jump and curvature there, which the screen does change quite quickly from flat into, into the side curve there. And then I've only got a G2 connection here uh, between the between the lens and the case but then you can quite you see this pronounced sort of lump here which in the curvature graph you can sort of see that there is a bit more of a lump there right it's accelerating more but when you're doing it this way when you're looking at it like this it's actually quite pronounced right so i'd imagine if i um, made this into a physical object and ran my finger around there i probably want to change it Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap that up here because um, I don't know if there's too much more to say. A uh, bit of an experiment into like the tactility of corners and basically if there's a way to, apart from curvature, straight curvature graphs to extract any kind of useful information to, to analyse things on the computer or is it just being too fussy. Anyway, food for, food for thought. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.